Hola chicos. Hey, it's been a long time since I've posted a video, so I wanted to do uh, this new one because I was, um, well, one of the reasons it's been so long is I'm, I'm doing less of Spanish 1 and 2, and I'm doing more of um, AP Spanish classes here at the high school. Um, but I have a Spanish 3 course, and I was going over the, uh, the words por y para with them. They're both used to say for, but used for so much more, as the slide so cleverly states. Um, and, and some of them said, hey, this works for me. You sh and I said, should I put it online? They said, yeah, go ahead. So I figured, okay, I'll make another video. So let's get right into por y para. If you want any help with this, uh, we'll get right into it. Um, so, profe, if por means for and para means for, how can I know when to use which? Um, by the end of this little lesson, you should be a little bit better with discerning between por y para. Let's just do a quick little pretest here. So, este libro es blank mi clase de español. Is it por mi clase or para mi clase? It's para. I study for two hours every day. Yo estudio dos horas cada día. Por. Juanito no se porta bien en la clase. El blank ejemplo siempre habla con Carlitos. So Juanito doesn't behave well in class. He, for example, always talks with Carlitos. Is it for example, por ejemplo, or para ejemplo? Well, this one would be por ejemplo. Number four, yo voy a manejar para Phoenix or por Phoenix? I'm going to drive for Phoenix, para, what? Well, it could be para. What about number five, yo voy a manejar blank Phoenix? <laughs> it's also para. Those are both correct. So what the heck is going on here? Well, again, hopefully by the end of this lesson, it'll make more sense. Now, when I was first learning Spanish, I remember getting a huge list of when to use por and when to use para. And I remember, uh, I don't remember if the teacher told us to memorize it or if my classmates did, but I remember feeling pressure to memorize this list of words and I, or this list of when you use por. And I'm like, ah, these lists don't work for me. Because if I'm speaking Spanish, I can't sit there and say, hey, nosotros vamos a viajar, uh, on the list it was, uh, Por, no, por, para, para, because number two on list three says number 47, square root of that, uh, you know, it, it was just too much for me to try to figure it out. So I, I, I'm a little bit more visual, but here's a list of when to use por. Uh, if you want to look at it, you can just pause. And then here's a list of when to use para. Again, pause if you want to uh, go over it. And here are the, the, uh, an abbreviated version of the two lists, so you can compare them side by side. Again, pause if you want to take a closer look at these. Now, I'm a little bit more visual. Like I said, the lists, they, they are hard for me. So I created this, you know, I looked at the two words, por and para. I'm like, they both have P, they both have R. One has an O, one has two A's. What can I do to remember the difference between por and para without having to do these lists? And so I looked at the actual shape of the word para, and I'm like, well, the difference is that this one has two A's. I, I always write in capitals, or usually write in capitals. So I looked at those A's, and I thought, oh, they're like, they're kind of like arrows. So this helps, uh, this helps you remember that para is the one used for direction, target, or destination. So if it's headed towards something, or if, it's, if you've got a target, you're going to use the ones with the A's, para. For example, for or in order to, like, um, Para comprar la camisa, necesitas dinero. In order to buy the shirt, you need money. Para comprar, in order to buy. Uh, if it's destined to somebody like, este regalo, this present, es para usted. It's for you. Um, destination. Viajo para Madrid. I'm traveling towards Madrid. That's my destination. Now, there are two arrows here, so that tells me that we can use it when we're com uh, comparing and contrasting things. Um, for example, para una vieja, ella, ella corre bien rápido. She runs very quickly for an old lady. Don't enter hate mail and stuff or hate messages. It's just an expression. It's something I heard somebody else say. It's not how I feel. There you go. But so when you're comparing or, or doing a relation of a contrast, you'll use um, para. And then uh, it doesn't really fit with the arrows, but something else I should mention. 
is if you say estar with para, that means you're about to. Like, ah, estoy para salir. I'm about to leave. Um, so let's just do a couple of these. Para, decide if para would be correct for the sentences below. Use the magnifying glass to discover the correct answer. Este regalo es para mi amigo o por mi amigo? Well, if I'm giving it to my friend Paco, it's going to be all oh, magic, the magic of smart board software. Es para mi amigo. ¿Vemos muchas estrellas por la noche o para la noche? Well, is there destination in there? Is there a destination between the stars and the night? No, so we're going to use por. I, I, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through the rest of these. I'll just just do this real quick so that you can see if you wanted to pause and check yourself. Okay. So if para has the arrows, what about por? Well, por, look at the actual shape of the word por. It has a big gaping hole in the middle of it. So here's how you remember what por is used for. Oh, so much scrambled stuff all over. Let's look at the numbers. Number one, through. So I'm going to drag down this number one. So you can go through that big O in the middle. It's a big hole. You can go through it. So I'm drawing these arrows of you going through that hole. Go one way, go the other way. So through. Like if I'm traveling through, if I'm walking through the park, it's going to be poor. Número dos, it says general time or place. Well, again, we got a big O in the middle. If you want to say for how long you've been doing something for a general amount of time or a general place, we'll use por. Looks like a clock. That O is like a clock. Okay, the next one, three, in exchange for. For example, uh, hey, I'll give you $5 in exchange for um, that used book. Okay, tres dólares por tu libro usado. Or they say una mano, whatever, you know, I'll, I'll give you diez dólares por la camisa. It's an exchange. So we use por, an exchange. And you'll notice that the blue lines that I made earlier, it forms an X, and that reminds us exchange. Okay, four. Well, if you're talking about, what's the speed limit? No sé, 90 kilómetros por hora. Well, the word por and per look so much alike. But that's an easy one to remember that por is per. Uh, the next one, number five, by means of. Hey, how are you getting to uh, how are you getting to LA? Well, I was thinking of taking a plane, but I decided I'm gonna go by train. Now, this one was difficult for me to come up with something. But I looked at this word por and I thought trains, and I thought, hey, this little R, that looks like a cattle guard. So how do you get there? I get there, por tren, by train. Okay. So transportation, por, by means of, tren, avión, carro, whatever. Six, the cause of. Well, this one should be pretty easy because um, when you know why something happens, if you're, if you're worried about por and para, you've already learned the word por qué. It's because of something. Um, you might also see the expression por eso. P-O-R-E-S-O, por eso. Por eso, because of that, that's why. So por is used to say because of. Next one. This is similar to an exchange. If you do something on behalf of another person, it's por. Again, just think of exchange from number three. So, for example, hey, my friend and I, we both work at Panda Express. He was scheduled to work tonight, but he's sick. And so I took his shift. Estoy trabajando por mi amigo. On his behalf, in his place, we exchanged. And last but not least, number eight. This is another one that doesn't really fit into the drawing, but maybe a little bit. Number eight, by. So there, there are a couple things here. Um, like if a book is written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, it is written por él. If a painting is by Picasso, Pintado por Picasso, by. Now, if you have a tough time remember por is by, um, think about that X that's in the middle there. In Spanish, we, we pronounce that as por. Um, think of a truck, cuatro por cuatro. 
In English, we would read it four by four. So four by four in English, cuatro por cuatro in Espanol. Either way, that X is by, and we've got the X in the, um, in the word there. So I know it's kind of a silly drawing, it's kind of a silly design, but for me and for many of my students, that little visual help uh, helps. So there are plenty of quizzes out there. You don't need me to do all these things for you. You can go hit Quizlet or talk to your teacher. Or if you're studying Spanish, I'm sure there's stuff in a book. Um, mm, we can look at a couple of these, though, just to be sure. So voy a trabajar por tres horas. Why is it por? Well, because we're talking about a general length of time, por tres horas. Yo te doy diez dólares por tu reloj. I'll give you ten bucks for your watch. Why is it por? Well, it's an exchange for. Okay. Now in class, we would probably discuss with a friend, and that is, uh, we won't practice this. Like I said, there are plenty of opportunities to practice elsewhere. I just wanted to give you some, some quick tips or, or a technique that helped me to learn por. Um, like I said, I, I came up with it and it works for me, so I don't expect it to work for everybody. Uh, but it does work for some of my students to just sort of visualize the general concept of por and para instead of memorizing lists. If it works for you, fantastic. If it doesn't, you can rewind, go back to the lists, and just memorize them, and then practice from there. Hey, uh, have a great day. It's Friday here right now, so I'm going to go enjoy a weekend. Ciao.